The following is a rebroadcast of News Center 5 Tonight, recorded earlier. Now on News Center 5 Tonight, a special report, America, the fallout. Tonight, local high school students bring home some surprising impressions from a visit to the Soviet Union. The search for answers tonight in a fire that kills two dozen racehorses in the western part of the state. And could this car help solve some local disappearances? Susan Warnick reports. Now, the news of New England and the world, live from News Center 5, tonight. Good evening, I'm Chet Curtis. And I'm Natalie Jacobson. The America program, many of you have been watching tonight, is being criticized by the Soviets. They say it fosters a negative stereotype of the Soviet Union. But tonight, a recent study of high school students in this country suggests that many American kids already have a negative impression of the Soviet Union by the time they're teenagers. A sample of high school students in Maryland finds the most commonly used words to describe Soviet people are hateful, mean, and restricted. And 20%. One out of every five students believe that a nuclear war will happen in their lifetime. That study raises an important question. What do American students know about the Soviet Union? News Center 5 tonight's Brian Leary explores that question as he continues his series, America, the Fallout. There was a time just a couple of decades ago when the American school child's image of the Soviet Union seemed as primitive as the procedures we were taught to protect ourselves in the face of a Soviet attack. Tony knows the bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. He is ready for it. Duck and cover. Atta boy, Tony. Surely we have become more sophisticated in what we teach our youth. Or have we? Critics argue the only U.S.-Soviet dialogue many American children know is... I am Lieutenant Colonel Potovsky. It's a criticism that seems reflected in the findings of a recent study of 1,000 high school and junior high school youth in Maryland. Asked to give a simple description of the Soviet Union, the most popular response, given by more than 16% of the sample, was hateful or mean. Restricted was a close second, with human or caring a distant third. And Harvard psychiatrist Dr. Eric Shivian says the one word which best characterizes these findings is frightening. There's a great deal of anxiety uh, and uh, pessimism among uh, American uh, teenagers today. That's why the program America is of great concern. Some scarier than they really are. Is America a bad influence? Is it anxiety provoking for American youth? We posed those questions to a group of high school students from Bedford who went to the Soviet Union last year and who were shown a preview of America. The only way we're ever going to be able to break down barriers between us and the Russian people is to try and understand them. And I don't think watching America is going to help us to understand them at all. Maybe the other people don't agree with me, but it is a distinct, it is a possibility. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to happen, you know, in 1997 or whatever, but it is a possibility and why shouldn't it be shown? But it's the idea that we've been doing so much to try Donahue. I mean, all these shows have been coming on now. We've been trying to promote yeah. peace between the two countries. People, not the president, not the government. People have been getting on you know, on like the Donahue yeah. show and trying to promote peace. And now to have something like this come along is just screwing us all up. It's just setting us all back. Understanding each other, these students learned during their week-long stay in the Soviet Union is no easy matter, whether it be understanding a Soviet girl's joy. I gave a Soviet girl who was maybe 12 or 13, I found some extra magazines in my backpack and I gave a 17 magazine to her and she cried. Or an American girl's fear. And the train comes to a stop and we're like, oh, you know, more passengers or whatever. And then we hear right outside our window, this Russian <laughs> yelling right in our ears. We thought, I, I was like, I was crying. I was like, I thought he was telling us to get off the train and, and you know, oh. go into this camp. Another group from Bedford High School is in the Soviet Union even as we speak. They took with them some admittedly strange notions of Soviet life. I pictured them like not having a sun, <laughs> you know, all clouds. And people but say their over. friends and teachers who have preceded them, they will likely return with a fuller image of a country America's youth still struggles to understand. I mean, small groups like us go over there and in our own small way, uh, at least maybe it's idealistic, but I think no, we're doing something. We want to have war. They think we're like the bad people and that they want 
we want to have war and not them. And they asked us, why are we like this? Why do we want to have war and all this? And we were like, yeah, it's not us. Right. We think it's you. And right. they didn't understand that, like, we both think it's the other person. When we visit, visit the school, the children, they're just like kids at our nursery schools and kindergartens or grammar schools. They're like as innocent as can be. They don't know what nuclear war is. I never thought of them as people. It was just the government and what the government said and nuclear bombs and whatever that. And then you go over and you see the people and the people aren't bad. They're not pushing nuclear war. They're just like us. Generally, the Bedford students said they were optimistic about the future of U.S.-Soviet relations, a sentiment shared by a good portion of those who participated in the Maryland study. 44% of those students said they were optimistic, only 20% pessimistic. The rest are still sorting things out. Kind of revealing to hear them talk about the trip. I know it was only a week-long experience. Was it part of a class project, or uh, how was it financed in, in this trip for, by the Bedford students? Well, it was organized by the one teacher, Michael Donovan, but the students paid individually $1,000 apiece. In fact, they said their Russian friends couldn't believe that the government didn't underwrite the uh, whole trip. It's just this kind of distrust, in fact, that we'll look at tomorrow as we examine propaganda. How much does each nation put out, and how much do the people believe? All right, Brian, thank you. Natalie? A major step forward tonight for a project that could mean a massive facelift for the city of Lawrence and a new home for Emerson College.